All right. So I had a whole bunch of people ask me about the dual crankshaft. How did you do it? Blah, 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 blah. I must get asked like every day <laughs> since I shared that video. All right. Well, I'll show you. I'll tell you exactly how I did it. So I put this in a lathe just like this. Chucked it up. I drilled a 12 millimeter hole. And I bored it out to exactly 12.8 millimeters. Put this in a mill, milled this off completely flat, right to this collar. Then I took a drill bit that was 15 millimeters and made a slight little tiny pocket into this face right here. And I press fit one of these. This is a 12 point spline shaft. So this is 16 mil, uh, this is 13. So what I did is the whole hot cold trick, press fit this in. And what was left over on this side was cut off, welded. Then this was all machined. Make sure it didn't interfere with the bearing. And then on this side, it was welded all the way around. And while this was still on, I put this in the lathe again and machined this little face right here again to make sure the bearing had something to line up on. And wherever it needed to be cut, it was cut. So it was actually cut off right about there. I'm not sure if you're familiar what a love joy is, but... It's something similar to that, except it's solid. It joins two axles together with a spline. And it's actually tapered in a little inside. So when this gets put in, it actually fits snug as it goes in more and more. So what I did is I cut this off. I made... I took basically sandpaper and just hit it quick around the edge to give it a nice little bit of a, you know, taper. And literally this shaft, this shaft got pressed into that hub when I put the case together. So it is a super tight press fit. So if, if it gives you an example, like the sprocket, or the clutch, how they go onto the shaft with the little taper. It's kind of like the same deal. Once it goes in, it's on. And you got to kind of pull it apart. So there's no play. But this is called the 12 point spline. Uh, the only thing I did was this is 16 millimeters. So I changed the uh, bearing. I left it just as is. And the bearing rides on this one section. Right on the top. Just like it would here. So, that's it. That's the magic to it. So, yeah, I changed that bearing. Uh, I don't know. It's a six something. Whatever the one that's uh, 16 millimeters inside diameter. Uh, these are 15 originally. So, all right. That's all. That's, that's the whole process. One other thing to note, too, is people were asking, well, how the hell do you balance this? Well, I took it to a place. They actually balanced both halves independently. And they balanced it for the two crank setup with a 3.5 millimeter offset in mind. So, I don't know how they do it. It's a computer. They put it on afterwards, spin it all out. I actually have like a hole about this size somewhere in here, and then another one half that size over here. So it actually looks like three holes with a small one on the way that they balanced it for the dual crank. So I don't know how they do it, how they do them independently. They can do it though, so 
I just took it to a place that has the uh, computer to do it. Uh, apparently they used to do this on like older snowmobiles that had inlines, had like the inline three and stuff. So same technique as this, but just so you were wondering how that happened. But yeah, I took it to a place that has a machine that's just able to balance it. I honestly have no idea how they do it how it does any of it or the math of that it's really complex so but anyways yeah mine's computer done they literally put a hole here and a smaller one here so don't know how that lines up but the computer does